throughout our lives do not unravel with death and let us pray O God whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy we humbly implore you for your servant Katrina whom you have called this day to journey to you and since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland, to delight in its everlasting joys, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we have our, the readings for the Mass today, like those who are coming to deliver or uh, proclaim the word of the Lord. Welcome. The reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of us has its influence in others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So that, alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord, both of the dead and living. We shall all have to stand before judgment, seat of God, as scripture says. But my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself the word of the Lord. Between the two readings, we have the sound. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, <coughs> though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words to find. If you walk amid the burning flame 
from the book of Sirach. Now will I praise those godly people, our ancestors whose virtues have not been forgotten. Their wealth remains in their families, their heritage with their descendants. Through God's covenant with them, their families endure their posterity. For their sake and all of their progeny <coughs> will endure. The glory will never be blotted out. Their bodies are peacefully laid away, but their name lives on and on. All gatherships with their wisdom is retold, and their assembly proclaims their praise. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise them up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We take heart from that Gospel, I think, on the Unexpected death, I say, of Katrina. It, unexpected death, you know, hits us all with its real suddenness because you cannot fully take it in. The reality, then, even as we carry out our funeral rites, it's difficult because in the face of death, we are sort of helpless and we see our, our own fragility, indeed, in it's this situation. We will never fully understand all these things until we are reunited with the deceased and with one another in the glory of Christ. But faith is always there, which she had. And faith calls us at the deepest part of our life. And God there touches us, certainly with the death of Katrina. He's asking nothing more from us than a simple response of love. Nothing more we are offering our sadness, our tears, and the pain of loss that we go through now. We offer all that at this Mass. The emptiness we feel, of course, I feel is the measure of the loss we are undergoing. We know that death does not bring an end to love. No. We cannot, of course, really imagine life without her at the moment. But that's what we bring to, to the Lord this morning. Katrina, as you know better than I, was a person who really loved life. And she loved all the simple things of life as well. And I believe she lived a very full life. Katrina obviously loved people. That's why she also probably loved to travel, to meet all different kinds of people, and she liked to relate to people of all kinds and different cultures too. Yes, the places she went to, she went for holidays obviously to places like Spain, but she also went and visited Lourdes on a number of occasions, which is a very holy place. And she even ventured, I believe, to to the Holy Land, it's not right, to the Holy Land itself. Not many of us have done that, you know, and she followed the steps of the Lord. And she visited the places that Jesus walked, lived, 
and died. So it's clear that the Lord was always important in her life. And this is the church that she faithfully attended. Her values were truly Christian. Christ says that his followers would be judged by the love they showed one another. St. John of the Cross was only, I think, echoing the words of Christ when he said, in the evening of life, we will be examined on love. How we loved. I'm sure Katrina will pass that test with flying colours. First she gave her time, her energy, and her motherly care to her own family. Indeed, she spent a lot of her life looking after her family. And the family members can witness to that themselves, and they do. In the latter years, of course, she devoted a lot of her time to her dear grandchildren. She loved them, indeed, with great devotion. Very special relationship there for her. And I'm sure for the grandchildren too. None of us, I'm not saying, is perfect. We don't want to make a saint of her today, you know. I'm sure Katrina had her own limitations, as we all do. Uh, in varying degrees, everyone has. But at the end of the day, judgment seat of God, as Scripture says, we shall all stand, and so shall, shall we, and shall she as well. But we do know that Katrina spent a lot of her time in the church as well, in the presence of Jesus and Mary. I'm sure her devotion to Mary was well rewarded, and always is. Every time we pray that simple Hail Mary, and the second part of it is, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We say that so many times on that simple prayer. And Mary will hear those words. And when we part from this life, Mary will be there surely to help us and bring us to our true home. Despite all the roots that we put down here, we have no lasting home here on earth. We are a bit like the nomads in a way, because we have to, like they have to make do with a tent, as St. Paul tells us. But at, at, at death too, you know, the tent is folded up. It's folded up to go where death brings down the curtain on uh, the day of our life. Without such a home, of course, life would be a journey to nowhere. At the Last Supper, this gospel was uh, written about that. It was about the Last Supper when Jesus was talking with his disciples <coughs> and he was telling them that he was going away Going away could only mean one thing. He was leaving them. As Katrina left us. But worse, he was going to die. Naturally, the apostles were overcome with sorrow and anxiety. And because going away could, could only mean one thing. That he was leaving them. And that worse, he was going to die. They were overcome with sorrow and anxiety. There's where we find them when Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, still trust in me. Even though you have those feelings of anxiety and sorrow and pain. Jesus saw their situation and their anxiety. and He tried to allay their fears and to ease their sorrow. He didn't speak of death the way we tend to do in the sense of life ending. No, he spoke of death as going back to the Father. And to go to the Father simply was for, to go home. And Jesus passed through death, and a very difficult death it was, in order to go home. Therefore, he said, 
they ought not to be troubled, and neither should we. He was not abandoning them. He was going to prepare a home for them in the ample house of his Father. And blessed are we if we don't lose faith in Jesus. He didn't come here on earth to see that we would have a long and trouble-free life here. No. He came here on earth to give the kind of life that cannot be touched by death. We're talking about eternal life. That's why he came. And Katrina believed in him. And God is with her now. Her earthly life is ended. But we now simply commend her to God. To God himself. Who vindicates those who trust in him. May she rest in peace and love of God. Now invite those who have the prayers of the faithful ready to come forward. <coughs> deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us that they may have the reward of the goodness Lord in your mercy That's all dead especially our family and friends may kind like happiness and peace in the kingdom of the Queen. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who grieve on Anna's death, that through their faith in Christ, their sorrow may soon be changed into joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, As death surprises Nana with this, so then may Christ now surprise her with his mercy and kindness. Lord, hear us. Graciously hear us. For Nana, who in baptism was given the pledge or eternal life, that she may now be omitted, no company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. That the hardship and sufferings Nana endured in this life may gain for her full remission of all her sins. Lord, hear us. And we ask Mary, the mother of Jesus, her mother, who stood by the cross as her own son was dying, that they, indeed she may indeed pray for us and bless us all here who mourn and are in pain and especially to welcome Katrina to her new home. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these, indeed, all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Now we have the, the offering. We see the bread and the wine.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. God Lord, we ask you to receive us be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and with contrite hearts. <coughs> and Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Katrina, we beseech your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour, may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, for full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts be brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <coughs> may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and with Eamon and Michael our bishops and even all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And remember your servant Katrina, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. Indeed, to our departed brothers and sisters too. And remember your family members, the parents indeed, indeed of Katrina and our own child as well, David. Remember them all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So now we have the privilege of speaking directly to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Indeed, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, Pray for us. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And may this mingling 
of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for, for eternal life. <clears throat> The body of Christ.
Let perpetual light shine upon her with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant on her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her with your saints forever, for you are merciful. <clears throat> and let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Katrina may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Is the final commendation to good King. So before now, <clears throat> okay. so, so before 
Before we conclude, we have a little poem, I think, from someone. Welcome. Firstly, we would like to extend a big thank you to everyone who has come to Nana's Wake and sent lovely messages to us, donated food from restaurants and everyone who has gathered here today to say goodbye to Nana. And Nana was born to Mary Ruddy and Tom Casey on the 14th of September 1957. She was the eldest sister of Tom, Eileen and Michael and spent her childhood at 47 Fadma Drive. At the age of 17, she was pursued by her dad, Jerry, on a local bus where they passed each other daily. At first, she wasn't a fan, but he eventually got her on a date, and they have now been married almost 50 years. Shortly after, the family began to grow, and in order came Stephen, the late David, Tracy, Donna, and the youngest Aaron. The family was well known to the locals of Ashton Park, and then to Bellius Bridge, where both places were full of laughs, cries, and plenty of knocks on the front door from only God knows who. Her kids recall their childhood and grown up in a crazy but very loving household, a house with a door always open, and you really wouldn't know who you were sat beside from one week to the next. Nana was a dedicated mother, extremely high pride, and loved to clean, sometimes a little too much for she went as far as cleaning the Christmas turkey one year with Jay's fluid. She loved her kids dearly, but her sons could do no wrong, especially her child of the house, Aaron, who she ensured had all of his favourite drinks and crisps and bars at his bedside each week. Not only a dedicated mother, but Nana also worked to support her family in Quantum, the shoe factory in town, Keytronic, and lastly, the canteen in Superquin. And even with all that cooking experience, we were still forced to sneak her Sunday dinners under the table and into a bin. She and Dad loved to travel. A holiday or four were planned every year. You would arrive at the front door to see the blinds down and the doors locked because they needed a wee break away. Nana also loved her bed where she would read countless books, keep up to date with celebrity gossip and was an expert on politics, current affairs and especially the weather. Nana was always full of life, young at heart, loved the crack and a can of Coors Light. She was a warm character and welcomed her sons and daughters-in-law into the family wholeheartedly. You could talk to her without judgment and we never saw her as the typical grandmother. We received her weekly phone calls and she was always there to chat when you called in, never missing a hospital appointment with her cousin David and helping raise her grandkids as best as she could. She loved going up to town every week with the kids and stopping to chat with many of you here today. Nana's life changed dramatically in 2005 when David unexpectedly passed. And as some of you may know, the passing of a child was her greatest struggle, which she fought up until now. Like us all, she had her good days and her bad days, but she tried to find her way through it all with Dad by her side. At only 65, Nana had so much more life to live. She had five, grand, five kids to spend more time with, more holidays to take, more weather forecasts to give, 17 grandchildren to see grow up, and was to become a great grandmother for the first time this year, and also to see her daughter, Donna, be married. Her passing is a huge loss to our family, and we wish we got to spend that little bit longer with her. We will miss her dearly, and we will mourn such an unexpected loss to us. And she used to say, when I go, please hold my family together to her daughter, Tracy. And despite our heartbreak, we really do seek comfort in knowing she is now at peace with David and her suffering has ended. Thank you. So now we begin our final commendation.
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave now of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. And one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the, with the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Now we will sprinkle the coffin with Katrina with the holy water, and then we'll use the incense to offer up our prayers and lead to God and to heaven. And the water indeed reminds us of our baptism when we are baptized in Christ himself for the first time. So we pray, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul, send her to God the Most High. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul, but send her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ. And we are with you and with our sister forever. Now in peace, let us take our sister to our place of rest.
Our sister, Katrina, has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister. Together may we Meet Christ Jesus when he who is her life appears in glory. We read in scripture that our true home is in heaven. And Jesus Christ, whose return we long for, will come from heaven to save us. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless this grave and send your holy angel to watch over it as we bury here the body of our dear sister. Deliver her soul from every bond of sin that she may rejoice in you with your saints forever. And be <clears throat> because God has chosen to call our sister 
Katrina from this life to himself, we commit our body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. The Lord bless her, keep her. The Lord make her face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. <clears throat> so dear friends in reverence, let us pray to God, the source of our all mercies. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. And Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress Draw near to us who mourn for Katrina and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Katrina. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life, our hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. And we pray for all who are buried in this cemetery. May their suffering be lessened. May their joy be increased. And may the light of glory shine on them, and may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And now with longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Katrina. Do not count her deeds against her, for in her heart she desired to do your will. As our faith united her to your people on earth, so may your mercy join her to the angels in heaven. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. We bow our heads and just pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would just recite one mystery of the Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, indeed in honour of Katrina, and asking Mary indeed to receive her in heaven. The fifth glorious mystery is the coronation. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> May the prayers of Mary, the Mother of God, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, help those who mourn for Katrina, and accompany all of us in our time of need. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Ananamanahar, Ogden Vic, Ogden Spirit Nave. Amen. Say. 